in this section we want to start talking about hypothesis testing. Uh, break it down in some of the, into some of the basic components. What do we need to, in order to set up and conduct a hypothesis test? After we've conducted a test, what results do we get? And then how do we use those to draw some conclusions? So whenever we're conducting a hypothesis test, we need five basic pieces of information. The first thing we need is either the original data that was collected or some summary information. In either case, coming from a sample, so some smaller subset of our population. We also need a claim. So based off some data, we're going to make a claim um, about a population proportion, about a population mean. We need a null hypothesis, and we need an alternative hypothesis. So every test is going to have two hypotheses and we need a significance level. So some of these things are fairly straightforward. Um, we need data from our sample. We need a claim that'll make more sense once we start seeing our data. But let's talk a little bit about what we mean by these hypotheses and our significance level. So the first hypothesis, the null hypothesis, is always going to be a statement of exact equality about our given parameter. So the null hypothesis is expressed as H with a subscript zero, so H sub zero. So H zero, our null hypothesis, could be a statement that our population proportion is exactly equal to 50%. If we were testing a claim about a mean, it might be a claim that mu is exactly equal to 52 or some other value, or if we were testing a claim about a median, HO or H0, it could be a statement that the median, population median M, is exactly equal to 5. So again, depending on the problem we're considering, those numbers will vary, but it's always going to be a statement of equality. Whenever we conduct a hypothesis test, one of our starting assumptions is that the null hypothesis is true. So we're always assuming that H0 or H0 is a true statement. Our other alternative, or our, al sorry, our other hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis, is always a strict inequality. So our null hypothesis always had an equal sign. Our alternative hypothesis, which is going to be represented as H sub A, would be a statement that P is, for instance, greater than 50%. We could say that P is less than 50%. Or that our population proportion is simply not equal to 50%. So our alternative statement is always a statement that our population parameter somehow differs from what we're assuming in that null hypothesis. So either greater than, less than, or just not equal to. The claim in our problem can be represented by either the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis, so H0 or HA. And then our last piece, the significance level, which we're going to represent with the Greek letter alpha. So it's sort of a cursive A shape. So our significance level, alpha, is the probability of committing a type 1 error. And we'll go into a little bit more detail about what we mean, what a type 1 error is versus we'll also have a type 2 error that we'll talk about. So we'll go into, into that in a little bit more detail, but these are the basic pieces that we need. We'll always have a null hypothesis that's a direct equality, an alternative hypothesis that's always a strict inequality, we'll have a claim which we'll use to construct those hypotheses, and then we'll always have a significance level which tells us about the potential error in our test.